it's a passenger. It is, it is. It's a passenger. Well, we're down on numbers. Yeah, we started off with four. Yep, we've got two trucks now, and we had four people. We've got three now. So <laughs> you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out something has happened along the way. Well, we're not going to tell you what that is. You're going to have to watch the entire DVD to find out. I'm, I'm going to say, yeah. once you watch this, I guarantee you're going to be planning your next trip oh. to Victorian high country, because yep. this is one of those trips. Yep. Holy hell. Yeah. So sit down, grab something cold, and relax yourself into the Victorian high country. <laughs> All right, let's get off here. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're back in one of my favourite four-wheel drive locations. And the plan from here is to take on Orton's track, which we've heard is an absolute cracker. Then we're going to visit one of the best lookouts in Australia at the Pinnacles. And finally, we'll be visiting the iconic Blue Rag Range. Now, before we engage four-wheel drive, me and the boys are going to drop some pressures. When I say boys, I mean Sean of course, and a couple of good mates. Stu Dog from Wholesale Automatics and Nick from Black Series Camper Trailers. It's time for some four-wheel drive action. The weather is great, the trucks are humming along nicely, and we're gonna follow the VMS to Orton's track, which comes highly recommended by a high country local. Ah, oh, this is what the high country's all about to me, river crossings, mate. Looks nice, mate, looks real nice. Looks bumpy, though. A lot of rocks in here, believe it or not. <laughs> Righto, you look like you're through. I'm on my way, mate. The D-Max is going to love this trip. It was made for this kind of terrain. Did you notice I got my seatbelt off? That's my choice, personal preference. Whenever I do a water crossing, I take my seatbelt off just in case. This time of year in the Victorian high country, most of the rivers are the perfect depth for crossing. A real key, though, is stick to the prescribed wheel tracks as you see them in front of you and don't go too far to your left or your right because you just never know. This one, though, although it's a long crossing, is very straightforward. But like all in the Victorian high country, it's an absolute cracker. The Victorian high country is part of the Great Dividing Range and the views are great whether you're on the peaks or in the valleys below. Hey, Graham, you got a copy there, mate? Sorry, but I was too busy looking out the window. Yeah, what's up? Mate, I was just thinking to myself, I was just thinking, you know, the high country, I've done a lot of tough tracks down here, and this is probably a mild track in comparison, but I'll tell you what, I'm having a lot of fun down here. You know, it, you've probably been reading my thoughts a bit because I was just thinking to myself, I like, you know, obviously when we come up here, we try and find the hardest tracks, but there's so much more to the high country. Tracks like this, where you can camp just about anywhere, you've got a river in front of you, anyone can do it. This is the side of the high country I really think more people should try and think about before they come out here. Yeah, I like the fact as well we can take a camper trailer as well. Nick, you must be loving having a camper trailer with you at the moment, mate, to take full advantage of these campsites. Yeah, absolutely. The camper trailer is pretty much suited for this kind of this kind of touring that we've been doing. That's the high country we're trying to show you right now is you don't need to have an overly modified four-wheel drive. You just need to have a four-wheel drive, a tank full of diesel, and get out here and explore. And trust me, if you do come to the high country, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to have probably one of the best trips of your life. And your family and yourself will remember it for years to come. Oh, I love this place, you can't half tell. You and me both, mate. However, as much as we're enjoying the touring aspects of things right now, we're soon to be arriving at the top end of Orton's track. This is where things are going to get serious. Well, boys, according to the VMS, this one here is the Orton track. So I don't know a lot about this one, never driven it before. But um, actually on social media, a few blokes actually told me about this track. They said it was pretty tough, so we're keen to find out where it goes, I suppose. I'm following your lead. Let's do this. Oops, it's going straight downhill. Yeah, boys, it goes straight downhill from here. I can see a massive view, and it looks like from the VMS, we need to get to the end about a thousand metres and over a pretty short distance, too. Perhaps we should have bought parachutes, mate. Oh, holy heck, boys, give yourselves some distance down here. This is really steep. This is straight down sort of stuff. Just straight down. Quite impressive. Yeah, it's near vertical. I'm gonna maybe pull up and jump out and have a quick look. 
straight downhill is an understatement. Sean's decided to pull up so that we can take a closer look before dropping into this descent. There you go. Let's go check this out. Parking on hills like this and getting out of your four-wheel drive is no joke. Things can and have gone wrong in the past. That's coming up now. Are you chocking the wheels? Yeah. This is the not so steep bit, believe it or not. This is the easy bit. Down there is just check it out. This descent is crazy steep and it's typical of some of the harder tracks here in the Victorian high country. You know it's steep and you can't walk down it properly. But there's definitely a line on the left-hand side here. And then cross over onto the right. And I haven't looked any further than that. So I reckon we're good to go. Not only is this track just about vertical, it's covered with loose rocks that could be a real problem trying to get traction on. Bad, this is going to be a wild ride. You can't really go too wrong, but you can. You can go a lot wrong. Sean's up and pretty soon he's committed. There's no going back now or even stopping. Stick it to the left hand side, which is good. We're going to need to be really on our A game here. Every ounce of concentration. Out of the way. Out of the way. In a manual vehicle like the Dirty 30, Sean right now will be in first gear, low range. He'll be letting the engine braking do all of the work. And where possible, he'll be keeping oh, his foot goodness. off the brake pedal so he doesn't lose traction and thus lose control. Oh. Gary is all hell. That is steep. My goodness. I'll give it a go on the old D-Max. All right, this is one heck of a hill. I'll try and get on some flat if I can here. And get my seatbelt out. The feeling of driving down this is similar to that when you're just about to go over the top of a roller coaster. It's just pure excitement. As you can see, these loose rocks are causing me to slide a bit. I'm trying not to get sideways and out of shape. Right now though, it looks like I'm past the worst section, but these rock steps are daunting for even the most seasoned four-wheel driver. Speaking of which, here comes Stu. Wow. He's done quite a few of the tracks around here. And even he said after this, that this was one of the steepest he's driven. <laughs> oh, that right there was close. It's so easy to come off your line when you least expect it. Hey, that was crazy fun. Stu's made it down, now for Nick. But of course, he's also got the camper to think about. He's gonna take it nice and slow and keep on those trailer brakes the whole way down. But just as he was about to take the drop over the edge, things aren't feeling too good. Not really feeling good at all here. I can't, seems like I can't hold her up. Like I feel like I'm sliding. I can't break, pull it up in time. Oh, you're not even at a hard part yet. Not even close. Yeah, that's my point. That's why I stopped here. Now we're in a real predicament. We're going to have to figure this out. Okay, what I've done here, as you can see, is I've got winch extension strap doubled up on the back of the camper trailer using the two recovery points on the back and I've run a single line winch extension strap to the biggest tree I can find up beyond me here. And if you look at it, I'm roughly, wow, just a little bit under, I suppose, a car length, which is perfect because now we're gonna reverse the camera car back up into here, attach this to the shack at the rear of the camera car, run the winch out. Attach that to the winch extension that's on the back of the camper trailer and then slowly but surely just lower him down. Make sense? You got this? No. <laughs> we'll be right. All right, Nick, you got a copy, mate? Copy. Okay, I'm gonna, um, when you're ready, start winching out, of course, and just slowly try and lower you down this hill. We're just keeping communication the whole way, mate. Just let us know when you're ready. Copy that, I'll just take off the handbrake and put it in drive. Gently does it. With the weight of the trailer supported by the winch, we're gonna hopefully get Nick past the worst section, and then he's on his own. This right here is a tense moment for all of us. We're hoping we've got enough winch rope to get him down into the safe zone beyond those rock steps. That's it. That's all we've got before that winch unspools completely. Can he stay there? Can you stay there now, Nick? Yeah, I've got it on the brakes at the moment. 
Okay, we're going to unhook this winch. Hang on a sec, mate. Luckily, Nick is holding fast, which gives us a chance to unhook the winch. It's all you now, mate. When descending hills like this with a trailer, it's all about two things. Make sure you pick a line that the trailer isn't going to tip over on if it falls into a rut or gets out of shape. And secondly, make sure, 100% sure, you've got good quality trailer brakes on and that they are locked into position. is doing some serious R&D work here and those trailer brakes are working in an absolute treat. Thank you very much boys. Right, mate. There's no turning back now. We're going to follow Orton's track until we reach the end and then we're going to try and find a camp. As we push on up towards the top of this track, it's getting steeper and increasingly jaily. Stu's got the momentum to carry him up and Nick is going to try and do the same. Alright mate, well you're a bit stuck on that hill, I'd advise you to probably reverse down a car length or even more, both lockers and get some momentum up mate. Yeah, come on up, mate. Yep. So when you drive up this, mate, you'll see two ruts. Try and keep a tyre on each rut. So go on, on your right-hand side. We're all trying to keep enough of a gap between each other, but also keep our momentum up. Sean's having some issues. There's something not quite right. Time to get the winch out. We're here in the Glasshouse Mountains and it's home to some of Australia's toughest tracks. On the front of the 80 series here, I've got the Grande Mark III all bolted up. Yeah, look, I'd, I'd go as far to say some of those rocks are almost undrivable oh, that yeah. big. Yeah. And that's where I suppose the Grande Mark III really comes into its own. It's got a seven horsepower motor and delivers a nice, clean, easy pull, which is exactly what you'll need out of a winch. The Grande Mark III comes with all the premium features you'd expect, like wired and wireless controllers. You've got synthetic rope, fair lead, heavy duty hook, it's got it all. Every time we've relied on the Grande Mark III's on both of our trucks to keep us on the tracks, they smashed it out of the park. They're an absolute beast of a winch. Absolutely, mate. You really owe it to yourself and your four-wheel drive. If you want to go further, get yourself a Grande Mark III winch. It's vitally important that you find a sturdy tree to join the winch to. And make sure that you put the tree trunk protector down low. What I'm trying to do now is just secure the winch up here because I can't take it out of gear or I'm just going to roll back down this hill and that's quite dangerous. So I need to start the vehicle and I need it to be secured to a tree first. Okay, he's passed that section that was holding him up, and with the winch disconnected, he's managed to drive the rest. Look at the flex in the old girl. That raw suspension from the Dirty 30 is doing what it does best. Stu studied the track, he's picked his line, and he's up no worries. Now for Nick. He's into it, but those slippery shaly rocks have caused him to lose traction. I've flicked up a few rocks. You've paid your money for it. This is the time to use it. It's out with the winch.
of momentum, eh? Bit of momentum is everything. In the right line. In the right, yeah, get out of that rut. Soon enough and he's joined us at the top. And it's just unbelievable up here, especially in the dying light. You know what, boys? We've been in tight bush all day and we come to a view like this at the end of the track. And you just reaffirm to me, at least, the reason why I own a four-wheel drive. How good is it? Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. It makes it all worth it, all that hard work today. It's not me as to why they call it the high country, though, mate. But no idea. With our lights on, we follow the ridge line as the sun disappears. Oh, this view is just sensational, mate. I... You know, I didn't even realise how high of elevation we got on that track because it just kept going up through the trees, but this is just stunning. I'd, I'd be surprised if we're not kind of low by high country elevation standards. We, yeah, we've still got a lot of long way up to go if we wanted to. Ah, oh, stop it. Such a tease. Look at this place. It's amazing. What an awesome day of driving, and soon it's to be topped off with a great high country camp. When you camp as much as we do, it really doesn't take you long to turn a patch of ground into home base for the night. And soon enough, we had the barbecue going, meat sizzling, and a beer cracked. Life is good. This is what we live for. It's the morning of day two in the high country. The fire's going, and we're discussing our options of how to tackle more of this outstanding four-wheel drive destination. What do you got? What's today? I'm just trying to get today sorted, and yeah. I'm thinking that we head north and we go out to the uh, Crooked River track. Ah, oh, I've done that. There's about 52 river crossings That's what I'm in, a, in a small for. little area. Yeah. So right. many tracks and so many different points of interest. I'm just putting a couple of quick waypoints in yep. now. Yep. I, I say we sort of backtrack down that track down there, get north. Get north. And then Crooked, Crooked River. Start of the Crooked River. Done. I'll get the boys ramped up. Okay. You put the waypoints in. Done, mate. It's time to get packed up and back on the track. Here's a really cool tip when you're packing up your swag, any swag you've got. All swag comes, well these days all swags come with poles. What I do is I use the poles to literally get a really tight initial wrap on my swag. See how I'm using those poles to grip them? So that my wrap on my swag, look how tight that is. The ends are always a bit as your father. Then, when you get to the end, you've got a really, really small well wrapped, very tightly wrapped swag just by using those poles as a grip to roll the material up over the top of. Just a really simple tip, but works a treat for me. Pretty soon we're back behind the wheel and heading towards the pinnacles. Before we do that though, and while this mist clears, we're keen to drop in on an old hut that we saw on the VMS and take a look at an abandoned mine. I love this stuff, this should be really good. How's these conditions mate? And I was just thinking to myself, it was only a few hours ago, literally, that I thought I was going to get heat stroke. I know, mate, that's, you know, 40 degrees one moment, snowing the next, that's Victoria and I come through, isn't it? Really is so changeable. Literally, I looked on the Isuzu dash, 38 degrees, now it's 14. Go figure. Wait, I can't even see over this edge to see any views because it's just fogged in. I just like it. It's another side of the high country. I've always said there's no such thing as bad weather, there's bad preparation. Hey, boys, looks like a hut up ahead. It's what do you reckon we just um, stop and have a look? 100% mate. I'm keen. Let's check it out. I wonder who built this hut. I wonder what his name was. No clue mate. Bruce. So many little huts in the high country. I don't think I've seen this one before. The high country is littered with cattlemen's huts. Some have been lovingly restored and are great spots to camp or just to look at as a window into the past. Now this is the quintessential yeah. high country hut. Well, it was, it's a bit run down now, but... Bark on the walls. It's got that feel about it, doesn't it? Bark up here. Yeah, it would be it's a high country <laughs> This may not look like much right now, but it would have provided a great refuge for travellers who are passing through the area on those cold winter nights. Crack an old hut. Needs a bit of work. It's a restorer's dream. <laughs> <laughs> Right, don't pull on that. No, don't pull that. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Alright. It's room service. Not too far away, and we discovered an abandoned mine that we had marked on the VMS. Something tells me that Shawno hates tight spaces as much as he does heights. 
you get just the same experience from just going at the start as you do from right down there. So <laughs> I'm quite happy to just sit here, to be honest. That's cool. We should go and have a look at that ladder down there. No, nah, I mean, this is good here. Look, I can, I can see they've used a pick here. It's good to see the start of this tunnel. I'm, <laughs> I'm done. He's out. I'll leave you, leave you to it. I, however, love this stuff. Look, it's all through here. Look, another one there. Look, someone's come in here. You can see here where there's been some recent activity, which makes me think, you know, in the last few years, someone else has come in here, probably with a metal detector, I'm thinking. Modern day metal detector. And you run the metal detector over these walls. And it wouldn't surprise me if you picked up a little bit of... Because I would have missed a lot. I mean, back in the day, they didn't have metal detectors and things like that. Ah, there we go. Whoa. <laughs> you got to watch your head here. I'll never tire of things like that. Little look back into how times... Once upon a time where, I mean, can you imagine this wouldn't have been here? None of this would have been here. It would have started back down here somewhere and they had to dig all the way in, following probably a little quartz reef or something, a seam, all the way through. And it keeps going down and under. Hock health and safety, forget about it. Lunch breaks, forget about it. Maybe they would have found gold, maybe they didn't. Judging by the old shack down here, don't reckon they got too rich. It's time to get back on the move and make our way out towards Blue Rag. However, Sean's having some issues with the 30. This doesn't look good at all. My brakes have gone extremely um, soft and uh, there's a bad smell of actually brakes. I can smell like they're that bad. And um, also I have a few drivers here, mate. Look, I'm not too concerned about anything other than your brakes. Um, can you get it into a, into a lower gear and just coast down those hills? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do now, mate. I'm trying not to use the brakes at all, but I can still smell the brakes and I think they're actually sort of clamped on the front rotors, so it's not looking good. I might have to pull over, I think. Right, mate. I'd like to say this is uncommon, but... Mate, she's cooked. I'm getting used to this. What's going on? She's done. What do you mean she's done? Do you, do you want a list of all the things that's gone wrong just in the last... Whoa! See the heat? You can smell that, Whoa. can't you? That's, the brakes have just locked on. Yep. So they've... Um, I've got no brakes, really. The panel's gone completely hard. Yep. Um, the engine mount, one of the engine mounts is actually broken. Okay. And um, it's causing every time I put the clutch in and change gears, the whole engine and gearbox moves yep. across a few so inches. Out. Yep. I also noticed a massive, while I was down there checking the brakes, I noticed a massive crack on the leaf spring mount. Oh! Look at that. Oh! Down there, that's, that's almost through, so I'm about to lose the front diff. Look, the 30 still drivable. Yeah, yeah. However, it just comes to a point where my safety comes first and I've got to just make a call here. I might have to send her on a tow truck, mate, which I, look. Yeah, that's gut. Very that's... rarely happens. This truck usually gets its cell phone on its own steam. That's a kick in the guts, that is. Oh, well, obviously, it was jumping with the tow truck driver. Where are you going to take us back to Rocket Rods or something? Yeah, I'll probably take it back down there and get right. a few little bits. Hope they've got a welder ready. And... Well, that's a bugger because well, I think the weather's going to be perfect for the next few days up here. Well, I'm not going anywhere. The truck's going back to Rockets. You better clear some space in passenger seat, mate, because I'm coming along no, no, the no. ride. Looks pretty comfy in there, so mate. So you're going to get in there with me, are you? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll be your uh, navigator. Mate, need a navigator. You do now, mate. You've got one. All right, no, You've no, no. Got one. I like it. I like it. All right, so I'll go and I'll go and clean that front seat out. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll um I'll get these brakes working so I can get this move yep. back to the pub or yep. something. Yep. This really was the best that we could do under the circumstances. Safety really is everything in these environments. I'm carrying a lot of injuries at the moment in the dirty thirty, and it's just hasn't quite recovered from a lot of hard trips. So it saddens me to say, but this might be. I don't know. This this might be the end of it for this trip here. We took the easy road back towards Dargo and dropped the 30 off. It's going to remain there at the back of the pub until we can organise a tow truck. Sean's staying positive though, because of course, he's jumping in the passenger seat of the D-Max and coming out with me. I'll tell you what, this is quite comfortable. All right, but before we get started, mate, a couple of ground rules. What's this? First and foremost, can you clean your hands, please? Yeah, right. Don't yeah, that's, touch anything. That's fair. That's, that's fair. I'll put that down. Right. Secondly, the only noises that I want to come out of you must be from your mouth. I, I figure it's always polite to not speak until spoken to. You, you keep your shackles down here. Yeah, they're handy. I've got another one down here. Look at all these little compartments. I like going in new people's cars. And don't touch them too much, all right? Hey, what are you going here? Oi, oi, oi. Mate, no, we don't need to get in there. Let's go. Come on, out of there. You're going in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I'm a passenger. <laughs> I did not put those in there. Oh, that was not me. That's a practical joke. No, that was not oh, me. Oh, I just got in here, mate. I'm, 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 I'm as confused as you right now. I didn't. I did not oh, put those look, in. There. I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation. What you I'm sure there is. Like a bush mechanic thing, do you? This is going to be an interesting day. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's a oh, good I'll prank. put them back in there. That's a good prank. <laughs> We're going to continue on our journey as planned and head up to one of my favourite lookouts at the top of the Pinnacles. That looks 
fairly steep, mate. Look at it at the top, mate. Have you got it or what? Come on. I'll put my feet up so it's even lighter. <laughs> I've actually been to Pinnings before, but never done the Castle Hill track. I've been told it's a lot of fun. Well, I haven't done this track either, but I have been to Pinnacles before. I haven't done either track, and I'm looking forward to both. So let's bring it on. Well, have a look at this. This track has some serious erosion, and I'm guessing it's been caused by the weather. And I suspect also there's a fair amount of traffic up and down here. Look at that. That's fantastic. We've climbed a considerable amount of altitude here and already the views are amazing. That's proper cool. Oh, look at that. That is the edge of the earth, my friend. Oh. I never tire of places like this in Australia because of the very fact that they're so rare to find. I mean, Australia realistically is a flat land full of deserts and coastline. To be able to get up here, which in the winter months would be above the snow line, is just so special and I'll never get sick of being up here. And I think this is one of the reasons why I love the Victorian high country so much. Mate, it's a, uh, well, I mean, it's a, it's a sad day. Sad day? Yeah. I mean, everything. Yeah, I was thinking that from <clears throat> right along with you, but. It's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, in the 30s. She's, she's had a to rough be honest, few years. It has been, mate. I could have driven it today. Hey, you could have done, but I wouldn't have let you. No, it's that, not That it's front not safe, spring angle is going to fall off. See what the adventures I've had in that car. Oh, you betcha. I've been long on most of them. I, um, I couldn't even tell you how many times around Australia that thing's been. No, heaps, yeah. It's, been, yeah. it's done. Yeah. Oh, most of the country. Anyway, look, I'm not saying it's the end of the 60 for now, but I just, I need to spend a bit of time in the shed with it, you know what I mean? Yep. Not much further on, and we've reached the Pinnacles. Now, there's a large parking area, and from here you can take the footpath that leads you out to the fire tower, and one of the best lookouts you'll ever see. King of the world up here. Well, we're on top of the world at any rate. Nothing less than absolutely spectacular, mate. It's amazing, mate. I don't know where to look first. There's no, so much. There's 360 a, views. An absolute vista of mountains as far as the eye can see. Of course, we're right now on top of the Pinnacles Lookout. Really quite special. Of course, this whole area that you see through here, as you all know, 2006 was just about virtually burnt out by those massive bushfires they had. But today, look at it. Yeah, Mother Nature certainly bounces back, doesn't it? Really does. I mean, you can see a lot of the old dead wood now when you look close, but gee whiz, there's still a lot of green out there. An amazing spot. And of course, speaking of fires, the reason I brought it up was what we're standing on right now is a fire tower. So a, during the times when they need to be monitoring for fires, today's not one of them, there'd be a dude in here that looks out over the horizon and spots smoke and then sends a signal back to the old head office and they can say, yeah, that's just burn off. No, that's actually something we don't know about. We need to look at that, etc., etc." et cetera. Kind of makes me think though, times haven't changed much. It's how they used to do it. It's the best way to do it. Look yeah. what you can see. You can see. Oh, forever. Millions of hectares. You can actually see where we're going to go. There's Billy Goats right there in front of us. Yeah, right, we're going to go straight down that bad boy. That's cool. It was time to head to camp, and seeing as Shauna had left all his stuff in the 30, well, we decided to head back to the Dargo pub and camp alongside it. Something tells me that was Shauna's plan all along. As the chief navigator here in the D-Max, um, it's a I, wonder we got here. <laughs> it's a wonder we got here, but I, I've got a plan to take us back to a little place you've probably never heard of it, to be honest, it's called the Dargo Hotel. No, I've been there before. Yeah, look, I've been there once or twice. I've got a broken down vehicle at the back of that place right now. I reckon we go there and um, research and do a little bit of research for the next adventure, what do you reckon? Sounds like a mighty good plan to make. Yeah, I'm keen for that one. Let's do it. To get back to Dargo, it's one long, steep descent all the way down Billy Goat's Bluff track. Have a look at that, mate. Billy Goat's Bluff. Why I do they call it Billy Goat's Bluff? Oh, I tell you exactly why they call it Billy Goat's Bluff. You going to make something up here? No. no really? You know the true story. Oh, hang on about readers. We're yeah. about to get a real treat, eh? Exactly yeah? right. When they first came up here, it was that steep they couldn't take a four-wheel drive, and the horse wouldn't cut it either. Horses get altitude sickness. They have one animal with four legs, 
was a goat that didn't get altitude sickness, very good at heights and good at climbing rocks. So they rode the goats up here and hence the name Billy Goats Bluff. Just before sundown, we made it back to Dargo and we set up camp just behind the Dargo Hotel. And what a balmy, warm, high country evening it's turned out to be. Just magic. I'm in a king swag, as is Shauno. And of course, Nick's going to set up the camper. I think he's earned a bit of luxury after the day he's had. That thing has everything you need, whether you're travelling alone or with a family. Like always at this time of night, I'm hungry for a feed and so is everyone else. Luckily, shauno has got it covered. Hey guys, tonight I'm cooking up, well, I like to say a family favourite of ours. It's a great little meal and it's really cheap, that's what I like about it. It costs probably maybe $10 if you're lucky and it's pretty much used a lot of stuff you usually keep in your four-wheel drive. Now, it's more, it's more of a noodle sort of meal. I'm talking like a stir-fry noodles. I've actually got a name for it. What are you calling it? I'm going to call it the Dargo 7 course. We were in Dargo, right? One, two, no, three, no, no, nothing to do with four. It. That doesn't make any sense, mate. Yeah, no sense at all. Well, the reason why I'm calling it the Dargo 7 course meal because I'm going to do this stir fry noodles. Yep. Then we're going to go to the Dargo pub and have a six pack. Seven courses. How good am I? I'm not driving, so mind if I uh, <laughs> not help myself? I. Neither am I. I'm not driving either. How's your beer? Um, yeah, I could do with that one. Rattle. So, stir fry noodles are really simple and it's super cheap, and that's what I like about it. Ever done this before? Oh, one hander. It's not. It's not for everyone. One hander. Okay. So this is the long life noodles. Um, they're the best ones to use. But you can use two minute noodles, anything like this. This one says three minute noodles. So look, I'm guessing they're slightly better. That's what I tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've, I've got a couple of noodles ready. I'm just going to boil some water here. I'll put that to the side now. Just use. Oh, that's going really strong. Right, so what I'm going to do here? We've got Whoa. a lot of heat in there. Do you want me to turn that down a bit? Nah. No. No. Hot. Fair bit of olive oil. Now what I've done in here is I've already chopped up some zucchini and um, some onion. So it's just zucchini and onion in that one. So I'll pull that straight in. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! It's hot! <laughs> ah, yes! He got scared! Ooh, uh. yeah, and he gets angry! <laughs> How's that going? Yeah, looks good. Pour that straight into the noodles. Damn. Water and noodles. That's elementary. I'm now yeah. going to jump into the Waco. It's, and actually, you didn't even notice. This is my new Waco. I did notice. Can you see effects by Dometic? It keeps things really cold. Actually, yeah, they're really cold. Here, grab this one. Grab that. I've got prawns in here, actually. You've got prawns in there? I've got there. prawns. I've actually got ice creams in here because this is a 65 litre Dometic. Oh, that is, that is actually really Super cold. Super cold. These are actually freezing cold, which is great. Do you want to see something cool? Yep. If I go into the app, I to join to the Wi-Fi, and you can see exactly what my fridge is doing. That is actually really cold. Technology, eh? All right, mate, first things first, a little bit of garlic. Yeah? Yep. For real? Yeah. Wicked. Now, I've got some prawns, just some frozen prawns here. You can use anything really like bacon. That's looking good, mate. That's looking real good. It really is, mate. Got a bit of Chinese five spice. Now, you just want to give that a good old sprinkle. I think that's about enough. Yep. Ooh, you can smell that. Now, the other thing, I'm going to put some chili in now. Crushed chili? Yep. What do you reckon, mate? That's probably enough, mate. That'll do. That's one big chili. Oh, just, just a tiny bit of Megadeth. It actually suggests that you use a glove and a face mask when you put this in. Oh, look at that little nugget of goodness. That's probably enough. Nah, it's not that old. Oh, that's enough. All right, you can put those in. That's just red capsicum. Ooh. I'm going to put the shots in because I, I want the board. Go. Okay. Go. I'll keep doing this. With some colour in here. Here's some noodles. Whoa! Put a tiny bit of olive oil on top. Yes. That stops it from all sticking together. Then I'm going to get a bit of soy sauce. Chuck the soy in. Oh, that's, that comes out quick. Oh, that's looking pretty good, brother. I've got some eggs here. Now, these eggs are in the 30th, so we're trying to tape them up. We lost a lot, but lucky thing is you only need six. So I've just got six, thank goodness. Which is just put them in there and I stir. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's it. That's it, there's no rules. You could feed a football field with that. It's actually burning your nose to stand in here. Yeah, it's some <laughs> chili in there. Get that into you. It's got pawns in it. British India. People being quiet, that usually is a good sign that it is going down pretty good. Got a bit of kick to it. Got a bit of kick. That's exactly, mate. We're in the high country after all. Yep. We've got the seven course Dargo feed. <laughs> You're right, buddy. <laughs> got a bit of chili. Look, just put as much chili as you can handle. Don't, 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 don't go the full hog. <laughs> good on you, fellas. Oh, I kill it. Over here, we've got a Baduri camp oven, brand new out of the box. And here we have my old trusty that's at least 10 years old. And I reckon in that time, 
I've no doubt cooked well over six, 700 meals. I reckon just alone there'd be over a cricket score worth of uh, curried sausages cooked in this camp oven right here. So today I wanna give you a couple of tips so you can get as long out of your camp oven as I do. Now if you have a look at my camp oven, you'll notice that the outside is a bit grubby. Now you gotta keep in mind that this spends most of its life in the back of my four wheel drive. In the Dirty 30 before Sooty, it's seen a lot of tracks around Australia. Now, of course it's been bashed around a fair bit, and the other half of the year it spends probably in the fire. So don't worry too much about the outside of your camp oven. Inside is where it counts. At the end of the day, you cook on the inside of it and um, that's all you need to worry about. Now, what I simply do is after I've cooked up, say a roast or anything like that, I clean the inside as best I can, you know, get a cloth or scour in there, wash it down. When I'm finished though, I try and dry it so I get every little piece of water out. So I usually chuck it back on the fire until it's um, nice and hot and it's not a, a drop of water. If you leave any water inside your camp oven, it's gonna create rust and next time you go to use it, it won't be so nice inside. When it's nice and dry, the last little tip I do is a little bit of seasoning, which basically I just get a bit of oil, chuck a little bit of oil straight into the camp oven. You don't need much, just a little bit and just get a cloth or a bit of paper towel and rub that oil all around the inside. I do the inside of the whole camp oven as well as all around the lid. Now doing that basically just puts a protection against any rust or anything like that and when you go to use it next time, it'll be absolutely mint condition. And I reckon spun steel camp ovens are certainly the way to go. They can handle the back of the four wheel drive a lot better than the cast iron ones and I reckon the meals are a heck of a lot tastier too. It's the final day of our high country adventure, and even right here in Dargo, you can feel the serenity and then appreciate the beauty that surrounds us. How's that look? Nah, it's not bad for a beginner. Tell you what, it's no secret, I've said it before, the high country has got to be my favourite spot in Australia to own a four wheel drive at all times of year, not just summer, I mean winter as well, to get up into the snow line with your four wheel drive is something that in Australia we just don't get the option to do, so we are so very, very gifted to be able to have that. Now, we're camped next to this beautiful little creek here right now. You can fish in this, you can swim in this, heck, you can drink this. This is pure alpine waters from up high. There's no farming up there, so you can drink this water. Beautiful. Getting down here first thing in the morning and taking a few snaps, or even just getting out of your truck, I think that's really worthwhile when you get to places like the Victorian high country. Today, though, we're heading up even higher. And what I like about getting up really high in the Victorian high country, of course, is you get above the snow line. And that brings with it a whole change of environment. You get the tussock grass, you get those little stunted gum trees, and of course, it also gets darn cold, so it might be out with the jumpers. Victorian high country, if you haven't put it on your bucket list, then go right now, get a big black texter, and write it at the top of the list. Get up here and enjoy it. You won't regret it. Yeah, I thought I could smell something good, other than that country air. Morning, Chef. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm well. Well rested. What the heck mate. is going on here? We had a few things left in the wake. I thought I'd just chuck it all in a pot. You really have? I've got a bit of brekkie out of it. Look at that. Yeah, chorizo, got bacon. And uh, what are you going to do with all this? You can eat it. Just like that? Yeah, I'll put a bit of garlic in there too. I have some Go garlic on. in here. This is like a breakfast lunch. Well, mate. That is it. I hope you're enjoying having a co-pilot. Well, well, it doesn't really matter if you are or not, but... Not something I'm used to, mate. There's a lot <laughs> of backseat driving going on. I've, I've been taking notes on how to improve your driving. I'm up to about 400 pages I was going to say, they'd be fairly limited notes, wouldn't they? <laughs> there wouldn't be much in them. Ooh, uh, oh, have a look at these boys jump in. We're not going to lead lunch with that. No. Look at it. I call it a mongrel mix, but... You will. Yeah, it's a mongrel mix. What we want to do is grab one of the eggs yep. with a bit of... Yep. A bit of stuff. Oh, that looks there healthy. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whack that in there, mate. Done. That'll do me. It was time to get packed up and get on our way. The plan for today is pretty straightforward, or should I say straight up. We're taking on the Basalt Knob South Track and heading up to the Blue Rag Range. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, fasten your seatbelts and expect a little bit of turbulence as we'll be flying at some very high altitudes through this flight. Yeah, definitely interesting. Yeah, Nick, mate, I'd follow you, I think, real light thoughts, mate. It's um, <laughs> pretty steep up here. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard it's pretty steep, so um, I'll be thinking positive the whole way up. I'll tell you what, I wish I had the 30 here, mate, just to pull the whole convoy out if we got into trouble. Because um, I just don't know what the Hero vehicle is anymore. Yeah, it is. Oh, is, it, is that you're right? In, you're in it, mate. That's Sit right. down. That's why you're feeling, look at you, you're so relaxed. I am. That's, that's why. I can't tell you, I might just change the settings on that. No, don't touch anything, please. Just get no, your hands off. Right. No, fair call. Goodness gracious, your car, your rules. The South Basalt Track is another super steep track, 
Again, this is about keeping your forward momentum and trying to pick your line as you go. So taking the wild line. That's it. This is a steep little hill. It really is a steep little hill. And there's switchbacks. There's all sorts of things on it. D-Max makes short work of it. It's made for this kind of terrain. And Stu Dog, well, Stu follows my lead. And finally, it's Nick's turn. One smooth motion. He's done this before. I think Nick will be fine. There's heaps of traction here. Yeah, and, um, heaps of traction. We did it like, super slow, as like, if we were towing a trailer. I wouldn't be worried at all. Just um, jump in with Nick, too, like on. Wow, that was a big one. Suddenly, we're up on a really steep little pitch. Come on. This has got it. This has got it. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Dusty, go to that day, Max. Oh, uh, oh, get it in ya. I'm a pretty good co-pilot. <laughs> Vice president of the D-Max, I think, right now. Vice it's president of the D-Max yeah. club. Off we go. Go, 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 go. I want to come up, Stu. Yeah, mate, up you come. First gear, get you up, just come. Don't be put off by the radio. It looked like things were going well for all of us, but just then, disaster. <laughs> Uh, something went wrong big time then. Don't know what it was, but I was shuddering and shaking and making a lot of loud banging noises. That didn't sound good at all. We went to take a closer look. Because I'm not feeling safe here at all. The car's just sliding itself and I'm standing on the brakes. Nick is in a really bad position here. Stuck right in the middle of the pinch and the trailer is close to jackknifing. It's worse than we thought. Definitely game over for Nick. But now, we've got to get him out of here. Uh, it's a rear diff has gone, 100% um, gone. So I think the plan now is we'll just get him secured, try and get that trailer off, and then we'll reassess what we're going to do. I don't think it'll go anywhere. We've got to act fast here and get Nick into a safer position, and that means taking that trailer off. I feel I just got it off a bit then. Here we go. Yes! Successful release! See so if you can drive up. Put it in park and get out! Nah, nah, nah. That rear diff is all bound up, and even without the trailer, Nick can't move. Okay, looking good. Oh, they're nice and loose. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, what we've got, of course, is a broken rear diff on this GU, so we've taken the trailer off so we can reverse the GU down to some flat-ish sort of ground. I don't think his trip's just over yet, but it's going to be quite an effort just to get him out of here. So we'll take the tail shaft out, got it in neutral, it's all chopped up and stuff like that, and um, hopefully, hopefully it won't be too hard. Removing that tail shaft is actually pretty easy. It's just eight bolts, four front, four at the rear. Tail shaft slips out, but of course, safety is paramount here. Don't, don't break it. We're on a super steep slope. It was lucky for us, however, there was an old log that was the perfect chock block. We got that into position, and Nick wasn't going anywhere in a hurry. No, no, go. We've got the rear diffs all bound up, and you can't actually get any forward traction. The front wheels are driving, but the rear diff's so bound up, it's acting like an anchor for the GU. So we're going to use the winch to try and pull him. Look, it's not going to make pretty noises when that diff finally does let go. And I figure that the more teeth that come off that crown wheel, the more rolling force he's going to be able to have. So, I'm going to winch him up here. He's got to find a suitable tree. Like we've done this before. Perfect measurement. All right, um, start winching when you're ready. Everyone's out of the way, so uh, go for it. Copy that. You might need to drive a little bit with it. It's moving, keep, keep doing that. Things are looking good. Finally, Nick's moving. This is the result we're after. Now we can get him off this hill or been in two-wheel drive. 
Unfortunately for us, this section of track has a small lay-by, which has allowed us to operate and has enough room to turn around. No, this is cool. This, this is, is a really complex recovery. This is really complex. Yeah. You know. We've just turned a truck around on a 45 degree hill with yeah. no real lift. That's a challenge anyone to do to stuff like that. That's kind of cool. That's cool. Now, all that's left to do is maneuver that trailer into position and hook it back onto Nick's truck. This is a little bit sketchy, I think. It's the only plan we can think of. We've all put our heads together to see what we can do. What we need to do is turn this trailer around. Um, Nick's in two-wheel drive, obviously. You're gonna drive down and try and drag this drawbar around with him as he drives down the hill. We've also got an extension strap on the other side of the trailer. That's to stop the trailer tipping over and, uh, and of course, trying to stop it from rolling away and um, rolling down the hill or down into the back of the vehicle. So we're gonna try and do this as controlled as possible. Don't quite know the outcome, but you gotta try something sometimes. Slowly does it. There's no point in rushing these things. Safety first. It's working. The trailer is coming around. A bit more. Stop there. Stop there. It looks as if we've got that trailer shifted around enough to get it back onto Nick's trailer hitch. And reverse it back about two feet so it's as close as you can get it. So that would not have been possible without the help of everybody. We got camera crew got Jared involved, we got Dean involved, it worked. I can't believe that. We've just turned a trailer around on the South Basalt Knob, which is one of the hardest hills in the high country in terms of steepness. And uh, with a vehicle, with no rear diff. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty stoked with that. I think you guys are too. There we go. Nick's free and he's able to make it back down the hill and back to Dargo. We, however, are going to continue to finish this track and get to the top of Blue Rag. Oh, mate, I don't know about you, I'm a bit knackered. Oh, I get it covered in dirt and sweat, yep. and um, yep. there's no, no better feel in my opinion that we got it all ah, sorted. Ah. We are down to two cars now. Real, real complex recovery that one too. Oh yeah. Hey, shoot, I'm down to two cars, mate. To be honest, I wouldn't imagine you would have been one of them. <laughs> Take it easy with you, Sean, eh? No, it's good, mate. Look, two cars, and um, we're still heading north. Yeah, let's keep going where we're going, up, up and away. Steep old track, isn't it? Oh, it is. It just, it just doesn't stop. No. It just goes up and up and up. Oh, look at that. There's a view. The views up here are some of the best you will see in the whole of Australia. How many times have you done Blue Rag now, mate? Uh, this will be my second time. I've only done it once before. It's an absolute cracker, isn't it? Look at the view. I told you, this is my favourite track to drive in Australia. It's amazing. Driving along the ridgeline is one of the single best things you'll do in a four-wheel drive. Driving on the roof of the world. Oh yeah, well this drops away from both sides. This is why we own four-wheel drives. Have a look at that view, will you, mate? Mate, it's, outrageous. It's got to be one of the best tracks in Australia, Insane. if not the world, for goodness sake. Now, I reckon today will be one of those days that I remember for a very long time. Of course, old mate's cars at the back of the Dargo pub, which is not such a bad place well, to mate, be. look, the car's a lot like me in a lot of ways. It just likes to hang out at pubs. Yeah. Then, <laughs> of course, we started off the day, and poor old Nick did his rear diff. I didn't see that coming. No, look. I heard it. I heard it coming. Oh, it was a big <laughs> bang. A big bang. A lot of teeth off that crown wheel, so no that's, doubt. That's really throwing a spanner in our works. We've managed to get to the top of Blue Rag, which is fantastic. Right on Sunset, too. If I wasn't with these blokes, it'd be quite romantic. But We've got to head back down now and get down to Dargo yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and make some alternate plans, which yeah. uh, I think Nick will have already been on the phone. Well, the, doing that. the Dirty 30 actually messaged me on the sat phone before and said, Did look, it? it's, yeah, it's got a seat at the bar what and said, say? Oh. said, come on down, mate. They said it's happy hour soon. It's a weird thing to think of. <laughs> let's do that. Let's, let's get down and go and have a beer at the Dargo pub. Twist me rubber arm then. All right, let's All get right. off here. It's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> and that, folks, is how four people became three and four four-wheel drives became two. It was time to get back to Dargo and catch up with Nick. Couldn't think of a more iconic spot to finish up, mate. Dargo Pub. Just thinking about myself, mate. Absolute cracker. Cracker Forex. Cheers, Cheers, buddy. Boys. Best of the high country. Now, listen, the high country can be as tough or as mild as you want to make it, but regardless of which end of that spectrum you take, it doesn't really matter because the views and the lifestyle and everything you're going to do up in the high country revolve around getting up here and actually doing it. Now, we've done some of the absolute most I would say the most iconic trips in the, in the high country. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I reckon they're some of the most scenic. I think the high country for me is a number of different things. You can have it as hard as you want. You can go and do some of the toughest tracks you'll literally do anywhere in Australia. Or 
on the other side, you can do some of the easiest tracks you'll ever do, but no matter which one you choose, in the middle, stunning views, beautiful rivers, the best campsites you'll see anywhere, and wait for it, hardly anyone around. I tell you what, you owe it to yourself, if not once, then maybe a hundred times, to get out here to the Victorian high country. This, I've said it before, is my favourite place in Australia to drive a four-wheel drive, and I mean that wholeheartedly, mate. Where can you catch us? We're not going to. Well, you can catch us right now in exactly there, right, in mate. that door. Probably three days time, I'll still be perched on it a bar stool inside. But if we're not here, we'll be. We'll be on full drive action. See you guys. I'll see you there. Stretch mate first. See so what we're trying to do here, it's called the old egg game. Now, I'm the reigning champ of the old egg game, and what you gotta do is just throw it and catch it. It's a real simple game. It's a game of skill though, and finesse. But... Today you go down! <laughs> Alright, get back, get back, here we go. Ready? Here you go, yep. Oh, the version. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh yes! <laughs> Far out, I'm coming in, Egg. We are the champions, <laughs> my friend. Oh, yeah. Look at it, it's all over you. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! There you go, do it. Where'd you put that on, back in the seat? Boys, I'm getting a lot of uh, weird in-cab noise uh, in here. <laughs> Not too sure what it is, but I just feel like i check on you blokes how you're going. That's all nice and quiet in here, mate. I haven't got any chattering teeth next to me. Yeah, I've gone, I've gone go. off the edge of the cliff. Right I nearly killed us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Have you got more than one seat on this thing? Yeah. How do you wear that all day? Put that between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you've just got to go for glory. Don't always Egg win. Sometimes egg, egg gets everywhere. You've got to crack a couple of eggs if you want to make it omelette. You don't need a hugely modified four wheel drive to come and see the best parts of the high country. I'm sorry, I'll just dribble zero over myself. Sorry, that's the thing. I had let's one, start it again. I had one go. Alright, let's start it again. Blow for you, uh, Patty. Try and give me the pad. Patty's there. I've got to blow all the stuffing off the windscreen. <laughs> I'll get the boys ramped up. Okay, you put the waypoints in. Done, mate. Oh, yeah, you mob! Yeah! It's a phone call, folks. We'll, we'll take that. Justin, there you go. Hey, Justin. That's Justin from NQ Crash. Hey, guess what? You're on Forward Action TV, mate. Yeah. Say hello, Justin. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> He's always very polite. All right, mate. The key with this one. Yep. Let's probably go straight up. I got to the hill. We'll just what? To the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. Blue range. Oh. <laughs> I just fell over again. I was editing this, I'm slowly losing my mind. I'd like to introduce the latest to the rap lineup here in uh, Victorian High Country. He calls himself Slippery Shawno. Go rap into the. Yo, yo, yo. Is my mic on? Is my headphones on? Yo, I drive a D Max. Oh. Graham oh. with tampons in the glove box. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lose. Oh, oh, I can't lose. Shake it out. Shake it out. <laughs> 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 <laughs>